Welcome back to another episode with the Civic. Today we are looking more into the idle and trying to fix it. Me and Sydney are about to take the fast idle thermal valve off, get it cleaned up, reinstall, and see if that helps that. Um, also, the previous owner does watch this and he hit me up, said that the water pump's cracked. There is no radiator fluid at all in this thing. Um, and if I do put it in it, it's going to leak. So we got to get that fixed. Um, but one thing at a time, we're going to try at least get the idle working, at least get it running ish before it overheats, and then move on to the water pump. There's a couple engine codes that we need to check too. So let's dive into it. Let's show Sydney how to take his fast idle thermal valve off, how to clean it, and all that stuff. remove this there's a plunger in there that we have to clean make sure it's in the right position We got it apart. It's disgusting, but I think it was working properly. But it doesn't hurt to get it all cleaned up, put it back together, and see if it changes anything. Also, it probably doesn't help now that the car doesn't have any radiator fluid in it, that this probably won't work properly. But regardless, we got it out and cleaned it up. So we got this cleaned inside and out. Also cleaned up the nipples. Hopefully the hose will fit on and not get as stuck as it was. So now we just need to put it back together. Much better. Okay, let's put that cap back on. What? I get nervous when you stand there. Alright. Watch how I use this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You just go to it. It does it. Okay. Get it on there fully and then you just <laughs> Until it does it. So we got the fast idle thermal valve replaced. I want to get this tightened up. This is the throttle cable, which you can see it is not the right tension. So we're going to show Sydney how to do that. And then I guess try to drive it again, see if it idle surges, and then we'll move on to the next issues. There's two nuts right here. Mm -hmm. There you go. It. And we're going to pull it, so we need to loosen this bolt here. And 
pull it until it starts opening the throttle body. See it opening it? Yeah. So I'm going to loosen this bolt. It should start pulling it in. Got this pretty tight. Now soon he's gonna put that back on and we'll go for another drive. So test drive went a lot better. Tied in the throttle cable definitely gave it better throttle response, obviously. And then there's no idle surging now, so that's good. I'm going to show Sydney how to check the engine codes on these OBD Zero cars, and then we'll see what those codes are, and then go to fix that. Um, also, we need to still do the water pump, but I kind of I just want to get the car driving as best as it can before we dive into that. So let's pull these codes, uh, see what we have, and then go from there. So to check the engine codes, you need to turn your car on. That little light right there, you gotta count. A long one is a 10th digit, right? Yes. And then the shorter ones are the single digits. So a long one would be one, those short ones would be one, two, and that'd be code 12. So there's multiple ones on here that Sydney, need, Sydney and I need to write down. And then on Honda Tech or some other forum, we'll have a full list of these. And then you just need to match your code or what's on the list and then search more and then figure out what your issue is. So we're going to do that right now. So these are the engine codes we came up with. It's code 9, 12, 16, 17, and 43. So now we'll get on the interwebs and see what those are. So you'll find this. There's Honda Tech OBD0 code list. You got all these codes on here. So for example, number nine is CYP sensor, cylinder number one position. And we got 12 this is the EGR lift cylinder or lift sensor, which we don't really care about that. It's cut and it's useless. Number 16 is fuel injection system, fuel injector system. The number 17 is vehicle speed sensor, which this car doesn't have. And then 43. Fuel oh, fuel supply system. Check fuel line pressure, fuel pressure regulator. Check the oxygen sensor. Also check for vacuum leaks. To show you all know Sydney's trying her best to write good because she usually has bad handwriting. Oh. <laughs> all right, so we're going to dive a little bit into this and see what we can figure out. So we did some digging. Uh, the number nine, code number nine, is for the distributor. Uh, it's a top dead center uh, position inside a distributor. So I just reset the code. We're going to see if it comes back up. If it does, it's more than likely a distributor. We can dive deeper into it to make sure it's not a wiring issue. But other than that, we'll probably just go buy a new one, see if it fixes it, and then go from there. So let's see if we reset these check engine lights. Okay. There's nothing coming up.
Well, we tried to take it on another test drive and it just died and won't start back up. Kind of sounds like it's flooding itself maybe or the TDC isn't working properly. So right now, I guess while we let it sit, pull the spark plugs, check those out. Um, and then may run to the store, get some spark plugs, a fuel filter, and then distributor, and then go from there. So let's get these spark plugs out. So to take the spark plugs out, you need to remove all four of these. The motor's gonna be hot, so be careful if you lean on it. You just pull it out. Grab right here. Mm -hmm. Keep pulling them out. And then we'll take this, and we'll crank it loose, put your hand like higher up. Mm -hmm. Oh, already loose. I bet you already loose. Yep. That's hilarious. Okay, well, I'll just go ahead and... First one, that's our first one. Got some oil on it. Probably need to get a valve cover gasket too while we're there. They are engine case, which is good. You can smell the fuel. Smell it? Ew. There's a there's an O-ring right here that goes with the valve cover gasket and it's letting oil seep down into it. This is bad because I don't know yet. And we gotta figure that out. So we need to check the wiring and make sure there's no cuts or anything and then kind of go from there. So I'll take this back off. And not the right one. And we need to uh, check the ohms, uh, the resistance in the wire. We need to check the wire on here. And look at that. We have a wire that's not in. Well, that wasn't in, so I'm going to make sure this wasn't deep pinned or something funky, and then go from there. So let's dive into this. Drive and see if these codes will come back on. start now. So we're back from the parts store. We got a new fuel filter, oxygen sensor, and we got this for later when we fill up with a new, when we fill the gas tank up, hopefully clean some of the injectors and other parts. Then Sydney's ordering the timing kit. 
uh, valve cover gasket, and NGK spark plug wires. That's, that's just what you run on Hondas is NGK stuff. It already has NGK spark plugs. We just need the wire set. We should be good. Uh, I think this distributor is fine, hopefully. So we're going to pass on getting that and save that for last. So let's get the fuel filter fixed, oxygen sensor fixed, and then see how she runs. Fuel. Okay. There's the old sensor. New guy. Actually. Oh, this is a Denzo. We went with an NTK, a little cheaper. I should get the job done. So all it does is just goes, sits under the exhaust, mm -hmm. just sniffs it. Yeah. This is the first time actually being under the car, and I've noticed that the oil pan is hammered in. So definitely need to get that on the list to buy. Um, but there's the new sensor in. Also you can see the puddle of water. We well, tried to uh, we put water in see if the water pump was leaking and sure enough it is like the previous owner said. So no big deal it's just water on the floor not radiator fluid. Also you can see the exhaust or what used to be it. I mean it's it really just needs a muffler. It's got the full thing almost. It's got the cat, well, test pipe, it's not a cat. And it's got the resonator. We're just missing that back section, so. Let's start it up, see if it runs a little bit better. Um, also, Sydney might be getting an HKS exhaust. So there's that. Um, so let's start it up, see what it does, see if it idles better. Let's get it. You see that lightning? So I think we finally fixed it. We are recording, okay. So, I was Googling, you know, cause I'm a YouTube mechanic, about a couple years back, like 10 or 15 years ago, someone mentioned that this could be a fuel pressure regulator issue. And so that got me thinking, I started looking in here and this fuel pressure regulator was on here. And to get the hose on, it was kinked going up cause it was basically against the intake manifold right here. So I think it wasn't allowing pressure back into the tank, which was holding too much pressure into the fuel rail. Thankfully, I got a lot of Honda parts around here and I took the fuel pressure regulator off my D16, that's for the wagon, put it on here and it seems to be doing a lot better. It's raining, so I can't really drive the car too much out here, especially because the windshield's cracked. Um, but it seems a hell of a lot better. And in the drive that we did, it did not bog at all. It used to bog when I'd come inside and try to like lightly feather the gas in, it would just bog and have no power. So I think we finally fixed the issue. It's idling good, running good. So now we need to wait for the parts of Sydney order to get in, get those swapped in, and then go from there, see if it actually drives and doesn't overheat, check all the gears. Oh, got fixed the shift linkage. Um, I think there's a grind in the third gear. Hopefully it's just because the shift link is messed up, but hopeful it's not that. Um, also, in the very first video, I mentioned this might be a JSR transmission. I was uh, updated by a lot of people that I was probably wrong there. So thank you for everyone. Um, it's more than likely a LS transmission out of a 9091. We might got lucky and it could have been a 92, 93 JSR, but who knows? 
Uh, regardless, it's still pretty expensive nowadays. Even an LS transmission, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're probably like four or $500. So it's still expensive. Um, but I was wrong. Sorry. So yeah, let's wait for Sydney's parts to come in and then we'll get the time belt knocked out, show her how to do all that and how much of a pain in the ass is with the engine in the car. So see you then. Well, here's our mount. It's, it's toast. Are y'all ready to see this? You wanna take a guess while it was leaking?